Good evening. Thank you for joining us for the Old Fourth Street Reclaimed Water Main Project uh, community meeting. We're so glad that you're here. We're going to get started with our agenda. I'm Emily Chancellor and I'm with Austin Waters uh, Public Information Office. And tonight we're going to start with some welcome and logistics and we'll do introductions for our project team. Then we'll hear about uh, some background about our reclaimed water system and an overview of our reclaimed water system. And then we'll get into the details about the Old Fourth Street project with some overview. We'll have questions and answers. We'll answer your questions at the end of the presentation and then So I'll start with some logistics. Um, like I said, I'm Emily Chancellor and I'm with our Public Information Office and I'll be helping with communications for, for this project. So I will be a contact throughout the project along with the project team. You'll see that uh, we're coming from different locations. Most of us are working from home uh, in the current pandemic situation. So uh, you may hear some background noise. Uh, my experience is that dogs get very excited during these public meetings. So we've had some interruptions from barking dogs or children entering the room. So uh, bear with us as we get through this the best we can. We want this to be informative for you and as seamless as possible. If you have a technology glitch or you have trouble um, hearing the meeting or accessing the meeting, feel free to follow up with me and we'll get you the information that you're wanting later. We also will have a recording of the meeting that you can view later. So um, I wanted to just make sure you know this is not your only chance um, to engage with us. So at the end of the presentation, we will go through questions and answers. And you see here on the screen an example of the Q&A box that you should be seeing on your screen. So at any point, you can type in questions or comments in that box, and we'll go through those at the end, and we'll answer your questions here during the meeting. If we don't have the information that's needed for, to answer the question, then I'll take note of it, and we'll follow up later. We can post it on the website or follow up with you individually. So thanks again for being here. And next we will do our team introductions, starting with Dan Pedersen. Hello, uh, my name is Dan Pedersen. I work with Austin Water and I manage the Reclaim Water program there. Hi, my name is uh, Oistan Mohan. I also work with uh, Austin Water and I am the project manager for the Alter Street Reclaim Water Project. Good evening, uh, my name is Thomas Rolock with CAS Consulting, and I am the design engineer for phase one of the project, which we will show you later in, in the program. And I'm uh, Dale Murphy with k Associates. We are the design engineer for the phase two portion of this project. And hi, I'm Emily Chancellor. I, as I've mentioned, I do community outreach and I, work with community outreach on all of our construction projects for Austin Water throughout the city. And I'm happy to be part of this project as well. All right, so next we'll get straight into our presentation and I'll hand it over to Dan. Okay, so uh, Emily, I guess you'll just advance the slide when I, I ask for that? I okay. sure will, yes, yes. Okay, uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, my name is Dan Patterson and I'm with Austin Water and manage the Reclaim Water program. Before we get too far into things tonight, I, I want to thank you for attending this meeting and uh, spending some of your valuable time with us. Uh, we typically have meetings like this in person uh, at the 30 to 60% design stage of a project. That way we know enough about the project, they're starting to gel and we can knowledgeably answer any kind of questions that you have. But at the same time, we're not so far along that we can't make changes to the project uh, based on the input that we receive. Uh, having said that, let me start with some background on the Reclaim Water Program and uh, later speakers will get more into the specifics of these projects. Um, next slide, Emily. So first off, kind of big picture, what is Reclaim Water? Well, essentially it's highly treated wastewater effluent from our wastewater treatment plants. We purify it there to a very high level and we put most of it into the Colorado River, but we do hold some back and um, put it in tanks and pump it around town through a pipe network where uh, customers use it 
predominantly for irrigation, but also for cooling, uh, some manufacturing and also toilet flushing as well. Uh, reclaimed water is a water conservation effort because the water is used twice. Uh, first as drinking water through the home or business, and then a second time uh, on the lawn of a park or a, or a residence. Uh, and as I said, some customers use it for cooling and manufacturing as well. Uh, next slide, please. As uh, you are probably aware, drinking water and water has always been scarce in Central Texas. That's why we've been providing reclaimed water since as far back as 1974. You may have recently also heard references to Water Forward. It's a recently adopted plan uh, for 100 years that uh, assures that we have the necessary water supplies for the city and the community uh, over the next 100 years as we grow from a population of 1 million to a population of 4 million people. Uh, as part of this plan, uh, Reclaim Water uh, is uh, very prominently identified into it. In it, we currently provide about 3% of the city's water needs, and that will grow to 16% uh, over the next 100 years. In volume terms, though, uh, we're talking about a 13-fold increase in the volume of water that we deliver. So uh, it's, it's a big deal for us, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, building out the system and connecting new customers. Now let me turn it over to Oystein Moan. He'll describe our system in a little bit more detail. Yeah, hi. My name is uh, Oystein Moan, and I'm the project manager for these Walter Street Reclaim Water Main project. First, uh, I'd like to give you a brief uh, overview of the Reclaim Water System before shifting focus to the projects uh, at hand. So. The Reclaim Water System currently consists of two separate systems, one north and one south of the river that is fed from our two wastewater re um, treatment plants. We have approximately 73 miles of pipe and serve 155 customers who use it for irrigation, cooling and toilet flushing as of today. And the systems are relatively fragile to breaks, which is why we uh, want to loop the system. So. Austin Water has currently has four um, projects in the design stage whose purpose is to connect these north and south systems and provide redundancy and reliability to our customers. Uh, these four projects are referred to as completing the core and completing the core includes the two Altorf Street projects this meeting uh, is about as well as the Travis Heights and Barton Soco mains which will conclude the core or complete the core rather. <laughs> so this will uh, create a loop system where most areas can be supplied, even if there's a break on the main lines. Uh, all these four projects are anticipated to be completed in uh, 2027. Next slide. So the Altor Street projects uh, consists of two parallel phases and a total approximately 13,600 feet of 24 inch and 30 inch reclaim water mains and approximately three and a half thousand feet of drinking water mains. The projects extend from uh, East Altorf Street and Alvin Devane in the east to Fairmount Avenue and Travis Heights Boulevard in the west. And uh, as I mentioned, in addition to the reclaim mains, this project has a drinking water component that includes about 2100 feet of drinking water main in phase one and 1300 feet in phase two. Uh, these mains are being installed in advance of a larger effort to improve drinking water service in the area. And while we won't see improvements in pressure at this time, these mains do avoid construction on the same streets later on. As for the timeline for these projects, the, both projects began their design phase a little over a year ago in late 2019, and the design should be completed later this year. The bid phase typically takes about six months and contractors for the two phases should be selected by spring of 2022. We expect construction to take approximately two and a half years, which will put the completed project at the end of 2024. 
Now I'll hand it over to our design engineers to talk about their respective phases, starting with phase one and Thomas Rolex. Thanks, Olsen. Um <clears throat> Our project overview, uh, our project includes about 5,600 linear feet of 24 and 30 inch diameter reclaimed water main. Uh, it, this is going to extend from Burton Drive on the west to Alvin Devane Boulevard on the east. Um, <clears throat> as always been mentioned before, included in our project is going to be approximately uh, 1,400 linear feet of 8 inch and 16 inch diameter portable water main. Uh, most of that is 16 inch water main. Um, and as you mentioned, this is going to provide long term or it's being installed to provide long term system pressure improvements for the potable water system. Uh, we have a short segment of and this would this would apply to the reclaim line, but there's a short segment of trenchless in installations via boring and jacking. Uh, to accomplish the crossing under the bridge or the culverts of Country Creek, or Country, Country Club Creek, which is just immediately west of um, Pleasant Valley. Next slide, please. And this is this is just basically a visual. Um, again, the dash line is Phase One, and it, it, again, it extends from Burton Drive on the west all the way over to Alvin Devane. That's the limit of the reclaimed water line. Um, and as I said, the um, the 16 inch potable water line is about 1300 linear feet. And although not shown on this exhibit, it does extend from Alvin Devane Boulevard, uh, approximately 1300 feet to the west, or approximately 500 feet from Sunridge Drive. And there's also a couple of very short segments at the intersection of Wickersham Lane. And uh, again, that's going to be probably about 100 feet or so in total. So that is uh, that's the extent of phase one. And I'll hand it over to Dale. Thanks, Thomas. Again, I'm Dale Murphy with KFreeze, and I'm the project manager for the design team on phase two. And uh, so just a quick rundown is pretty similar project as phase one as far as the pipes go. We've got just under 7,000 linear feet of 24 inch diameter reclaimed water main, another 1,400 feet of eight and 12 inch uh, potable water mains along the same, you know, in the same corridor there. Uh, we do have uh, one interesting uh, piece of our project we have to cross uh, 35 and so we'll be doing a tunnel crossing of 35 there. So um, looking at the general alignment here, if you want to bump ahead there Emily, thank you. So yeah, so we pick it up on Old Torf uh, and then we uh, turn to the north on the Parker Lane and then left on Mariposa and then cross 35 uh, right there by the whip in and continue on there to Kenwood and then over to Travis Heights Boulevard for a little ways up to the north. And then from there, as Oystein had man mentioned, there'll be some future projects down the line that will extend that main uh, towards Auditorium Shores and to complete that loop in the core that he had talked about. Um, so yeah, uh, that's all 24 inch reclaimed water main along that red alignment there on the screen. And then we have our potable water mains that will be installed along with this. And most of that's on Parker um, in there. And then there's a couple other spots mixed in with some short little pieces uh, uh, of potable water main mixed in there. But the, the majority of the work is the, the 24 inch diameter reclaimed main. And then, like I mentioned, there's the tunneled crossing across 35 there along Mariposa uh, by the whip in. So, uh, yeah, you can go on to the next slide, I think, Emily. So while I've got the mic here, I'm just going to just run through just kind of big picture stuff of what to expect when construction gets started. And like Oyston had mentioned, we're, we're over a year away from construction starting, so this is not imminent. And, and as Dan had talked about, you know, we're fairly early in the design phase here, so there's still a lot of unknowns of exactly how this is going to 
end up, but um, just to kind of give everyone a heads up of what will be coming down in the next uh, year or more. Um, so traffic impacts obviously are a, a big deal. You know, this is a pretty large construction operation. This picture here on this slide is actually of a project. If you drove on Old Turf maybe a year and a half or two years ago, closer to Mentopolis, that's the, that's the construction happening for the pipeline that phase one is tying to there. So uh, generally in Old Turf, it will end up taking up a couple of lanes. Uh, usually like the center turn lane and one of the travel lanes for construction space as they go down the road for that. Um, on the smaller um, residential type streets and things like that, it, it, it varies depending on where the pipeline falls within the street and how much uh, of, uh, how, you know, how much construction space is needed and, and, and things. But um, so, you know, traffic impacts will be lane closures, at least, you know, construction flaggers. I, we don't expect many detours associated with this. Uh, at this point, there may be some very limited things that happen. They'll be short, shorter term. For the most part, we'll just be closing some, some lanes and operating with flaggers to get people through and keep everything open as much as possible. Um, you know, the phasing of everything will be such that we'll be doing our best to keep uh, access to everyone's driveways and businesses and homes that will be especially on the residential streets, you know, there'll be certain very specific points in time where they're trenching right in front of a driveway that that driveway might not have access for a few hours in there, um, but we'll be the, in, the city inspector and the contractor will be working with folks and we'll giving them a heads up as those things uh, are gonna be happening. So uh, there will be a, a future meeting as we get closer to construction when we have the contractors on board for these projects and have folks have the ability to ask some more specific questions and get to know who's going to be uh, working on your street a little bit. So, um, you know, like I said, it's a pretty big operation. You know, the equipment is, that's needed to um, to dig these the, the trenches for pipe of this diameter, the depths we're at is, are pretty large, as you can see in that picture. So, as a result, there's quite a bit of noise and dust. Um, work hours, for the most part, are going to be between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Some of the work, especially if things come up with like detours and stuff like that, that may end up requiring us to do some weekend work. Um, if there's some heavy traffic uh, control impacts that will be happening, that a lot of times that ends up being required to happen uh, outside of Monday through Friday with heavy traffic times. Next slide, please. Um, all the work is expected to take place within the right of way uh, and, and some existing easements that we have out there. There will be a couple, I expect, uh, temporary easements for the contractor to have a, a yard to put, you know, put their equipment and their pipes and things like that as for staging and storage for construction. But um, as far as building the pipes go, everything is happening within existing right of way and easements. Um, one thing to note, that people don't always understand is the, the right of way is a curb line to curb line. The right of way extends beyond the curb to your property line, which is usually several, you know, it could be five to 10, 12, 15 feet behind the curb where the actual property line is. So if the, these projects, if we're stubbing out for future service connections for folks, they, we put the, the, uh, the meter for the reclaimed water there will be at the property line. So work kind of happens up into people's yards um, but within the right of way, not on their private property, but it, it is kind of in their lawn. Um, and so just something to note. Uh, and as we get further into that, we'll be likely discussing with folks where those stub outs will be happening and which properties will be getting them and, and that kind of thing. Um, I think that's probably next slide. Um, Water surface impacts, because we are putting in some water mains as part of this project, those tie-ins will have some impacts uh, for certain properties that uh, we may be out of water for a few hours at a time. Um, we don't, there's not a lot of that expected out there and the way the, the system's looped, we don't, there won't be very many properties that will have that, that issue, but we do anticipate that that will that there are some properties that will be impacted with some water outages, and you will be notified at least a couple days in, in advance of those outages. Um, and then just 
you know, the way this, the construction of these kinds of things work, you know, there's kind of, they kind of end up running through the same area a few times. They'll come through and sock at the pavement before they trench and then they come in later and do the trenching and digging and put the pipe in and backfill it. And then we'll generally put in temporary paving back over that trench. And uh, once they finish testing the water main to make sure there's no leaks and that kind of stuff, they will repave the 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 trench and the we will be repaving at least a, a lane width is is typically what is done on these on these things so it's not going to just be like a trench repair ultimately when it's all done a full lane will be paved with new pavement and stuff so um yeah i think next slide please i think that's pretty much it emily if you want to take it back over Sure, thank you, Dale. Thanks for going through that. And we do already have uh, questions queued up, so I'm going to read each one and I will publish them so all of the attendees can read along and then our team will, will come in and answer. So first question asked was, what expenses will residents in the neighborhoods be responsible for and what benefits will they see? Dan, I wonder if you or Oystein want to take that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and take that one because I've jotted down a few notes uh, since it came up. So uh, as far as uh, benefits that the neighbors will see, um, when we build these mains, we uh, try to encourage connections and the typical connections are uh, parks and businesses, maybe churches or whatnot. So you'll see some benefits to the uh, parkland and in, in, in the general area as far as like uh, greener lawns and whatnot, but um, we will also put in a service connection for any customer along the line uh, who wants to connect. And uh, if we do that, uh, we will be paying for work in the right of way. Uh, so that would be the service line itself, the meter box and the tap plan. Uh, the resident would be responsible for any costs uh, on, on the private property. So that would be the cost of purchasing the meter, uh, any kind of costs of installing an irrigation system or upgrading an irrigation system. But um, the, the service line meter box and tap plan can be quite uh, pricey and, and, and we will do that um, as, as part of our work. So that's, that's one benefit to the plan uh, or to the mains, excuse me. Uh, and then also I should mention the water line work uh, will improve service, not immediately, but as part of a larger project. So they should see pressure improvements in the general area. Thank you, Dan. Thanks. I, I'm going to read the next question now. The reclaimed water project from Montopolis to Alvin Devane had Old Torque with the bumpy lane for a long time. How long will it be before the section from Alvin Devane to Parker is again a smooth pavement? I, okay, Dan's going to take that one. Thank you. Uh, yes, so we we know that there were um, traffic issues with the the previous main installation from from uh, in Old Torf from uh, Montopolis to Alvin Devane. A lot of that had to do with the temporary pavement repair material which I believe was cold mix, which doesn't hold up very well. Uh, so one of the things I've asked our design engineers to do in designing these mains is specifying that a more durable uh, material be used for the temporary pavement repair. And so the way that the construction works typically on these projects is uh, the first pass is the uh, installation of the main, uh, which at any one location doesn't take a terribly long time, but if you consider the whole route, it, it does. And then there will be a second pass in an area if there is a water main being installed. Uh, and then finally, there's a third pass of construction in front of any particular point, which would be uh, road repair. Uh, and I can't give you the exact uh, length of time, it, it could be several months um, while the contractor does his work easily. Thank you, Dan. Our next question is, will this presentation be available for download? And I can answer that, yes, it will be. Um, uh, following the meeting, we will get a recording of the meeting uh, posted up on YouTube 
and we'll put that on the project page and I'll put uh, the PDF of this presentation on the project page too. So I expect that would be up in about a week um, and I also will be glad to email it out to anyone who attended. So it will be available. And then our next question is, where is the potable water line in phase two? So I wonder if we want to get Dale back on to talk about that, and I can go back to that map if that would be helpful. Sure. Yeah, I mean, the the majority of it is in Parker Lane. We'll be installing a new main uh, in Parker Lane all the way from Old Torf, uh, up toward up to Mariposa. Um, and then there's a, another spot, uh, I think, in Kenwood and another one in Travis Heights that are really short little pieces of, of of stuff we're just knocking out as part of this project while we're tearing up the street in that area for future uh, work that they're going to be doing over there. So, but the vast majority of it's in Parker Lane. Thank you, Dale. Our next question, and Dan's touched on this, but he might want to elaborate more. Will there be an opportunity for homeowners to connect to the reclaimed water line for irrigation? Sure. Am, am, am I live? We've got you. Yes, go ahead. OK, uh, yeah, there, there will be opportunities for homeowners to connect. Uh, if you are interested, uh, please contact me or Oystein Moan, our project manager, and we'll go over all that's involved. Uh, there are a lot of steps in the process and it's not particularly easy, but we would be happy to talk to you about what those involved and uh, do our best to smooth uh, uh, the way for uh, individual residential connections. So Dan, I see a little further down a follow up question. Who will have access to the water? Do you need to live right on the line to access the purple line? Uh, yes, you would need to be. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, you would need to uh, have a property right along the line in order to connect to it. OK, thank you. All right, next question. Travis Heights recently received a new sidewalk on the west side. Will the project affect the sidewalk? I'm thinking this is probably another one for Dale. Come back live here. Um, so we do not, the, the pipeline should be, uh, is planned to be installed in the, in the street in the asphalt pavement, not affecting the sidewalks at this point. You know, I, the, Water line over there, I think we are replacing a fire hydrant that so there may be a, a small piece or something that needs to get replaced, but I don't recall there being any sidewalk actually in that area. So um, I don't think that's actually the case. So in my head, I, I don't think any other than if we end up having to stub out for anyone who wants to have um, reclaimed water service over there, like Dan was just talking about, that might require some saw cutting of the sidewalk and, and patching it back. But um, for the most part, at this point, we don't expect any uh, sidewalk impacts to speak of, or if we do, it'll be very small. Thanks, Dale. And one of the benefits of having these meetings is that the community can tell us what's going on there. And so uh, I know the team will definitely look at that new sidewalk uh, to make sure they're considering that in the design. So that's good. I see also in this question, what is the timing of the two phases? Uh, was here. Should I go back to our timeline slide to help us? I kind of uh, am thinking this question might be about phase one and phase two. Are they going to be in construction at the same time or is, is there a phasing there? Dan's raising his hand. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I, I guess I'll answer that question. What we have on the uh, on the screen here is a general timeline. Uh, the two projects um, were started at about the same time, but one may go faster than the other because uh, phase one is not requiring easements, which uh, can be time consuming to get. Uh, but at this point, we don't know if uh, one will ha one will happen before the other or if they will both happen at the same time. They should happen fairly uh, close in time. 
but probably not exactly at the same time. Thank you, Dan. Our next question is, where will the trenching take place in the street itself or in the right of way curved to property line? Dale, I think you covered this a little bit, but let's uh, let's uh, talk about that a little yeah. more. And maybe if the presenters can all keep your camera on, that'll help this keep going smoothly. Sure. Um, I, I think the vast majority of the stuff's going to be within the asphalt pavement of the roads. Um, there's not a lot of space in the right of way that's not already taken up by other utilities outside of the, the pavement. Uh, and I think I'm not speaking out of turn for phase one either on Thomas's project. Um, but definitely that is the case for phase two. Uh, all of our alignment will be within the, the asphalt. And uh, <clears throat> on phase one, our reclaim line is currently, and I don't expect it to move because there's, again, we're negotiating a lot of other utilities out there, but uh, we're going to be in the, mostly in the inner eastbound lane over the entire project for the reclaim line. The uh, 1300 linear feet of potable line is going to be in the outer eastbound lane. And again, that part on our project is from Alvin Devane to about uh, 500 feet east of Sun Ridge. So for our project, we're mostly in the eastbound lanes. Yeah, and just, just to kind of let people know, I guess, you know, for these kinds of projects, especially in roads like Old Source that are heavily congested with lots of utilities already, that is a very big guiding factor on where this pipeline will go, is trying to find open areas within that right of way. Um, so, you know, we take into account dodging the existing utilities and then also look at how we, where we can find spots that will impact traffic the least. And so, like, for instance, in a lot of old turf, like Thomas was mentioning, the being in the, in the inside eastbound lane allows us to not have to block off any of the driveways along old turf during that construction. Um, we can do our work in the center turn lane and that inside lane. Um, so, you know, that, that that worked out well for there and other spots along these alignments. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, we're being entirely guided by the tiny little bits of, of remaining right away that don't already have utilities in them so but we take all that into account as we try to come up with these alignments thanks dale that gives us a, a good look into the work you all are doing i'm sure there's a lot to consider yeah okay our next question can apartment buildings along ultworth connect to the line I'm guessing this is a yes, but Dan or Oystein, do you want to talk about this a little more? Dan, I think you're muted. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, any property owner can uh, connect to the reclaim system. Um, we ask that you contact us to, you know, find out exactly what is all involved with that. And uh, I, I don't know, Emily, did do they contact you? Is that the best way to do it? And then you'll route them to us. Sure. The project page has my contact information and Oystein's. And on this presentation at the last slide, I have my my information. So yes, they if they reach out to any of us, we'll get them to the right person. For Great. sure. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, sure. OK, our next uh, question is, what is the plan for I-35 if one of their proposals to use tunnels is adopted? I guess we're looking at I-35 plans as, as well, Dale, and the work that you were talking about. <laughs> That's a, an excellent question. And um, so at the moment, we have designed that tunnel for our, because we're building a tunnel for the, the pipeline crossing, and it is going to be quite deep. Um, at least one of the options we've seen may require us to go deeper um, than we already are. So we are hoping to have some answers and some, you know, some direction from TxDOT on where they're headed with I-35. So we figure out exactly how deep we need to be with our line. 
but I can tell you the vast majority um, or how many different options they currently are showing out there. But other than like the deepest tunnel version, our, our stuff should be underneath any of those those options. And we definitely are coordinating and paying attention to that and don't want to have to rebuild this line again deeper in the future. Thank you. It's good to know that coordination is happening. That's good. So our next question is, why are you approving more growth when there isn't enough water? And this is a very, very important issue. I, I don't think this team here at, on this meeting is really involved in um, approving new development permits. So I don't think we'll have information to provide, uh, but we understand the concern. And as Dan mentioned earlier, Austin Water has a 100 year water plan called the Water Forward Plan where we are looking at our water needs for the next 100 years and how we can do programs like reclaimed water and conservation, as well as develop water supplies to meet our customers' needs. So um, if you're interested in that, if you Google water, water forward, then you uh, definitely could look into that project. Anyone on the project team want to add anything else on that topic? All right, we'll keep going. What are anticipated costs for a private customer? Won't there be plumbing needed? So I think this might be um, private customers who are connecting to the reclaimed water. Are we able to talk about the possible cost and what the private plumbing needs are? Uh, yeah, it's just really hard to uh, give out a cost uh, to connect to the reclaim system because it really is site specific to uh, each property. If there's an existing irrigation system that does save some costs, but there are marking and identification requirements. Um, so really it can't at this point, I'd be hesitant to say what the cost will be. Uh, for any particular customer because it is so site specific. Whether or not they have an ir existing irrigation system or not is a, is a big determinant of what that cost is. So I think the message again is to contact us and we'll work individually with you on, on that. Um, and Malcolm is asking who does an apartment owner contact and on our, um, I'll just go ahead and advance to this final slide. And here's my contact information here. And if you would just tell them to contact me, I will connect them with Dan and Oystein and, and they can look into that possibility. All right, some more feedback. We are in a desert climate. We do not need to see green grass. Yes, save the trees, but who gives a darn about seeing green grass when there are green plants that need less water? So I think that's good input for our team to consider. Uh, this reclaimed water system is an alternative to using drinking water for irrigation. And that is part of the water forward strategy that I mentioned earlier to pair our water use with appropriate uh, water sources. Um, next question is, is there a cost to using the water from the purple line once you have the connection? So Dan, I think you're back up for that one. Am I on? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, OK. Uh, I didn't see the live indication. Uh, yeah, so uh, having reclaimed water service is like having drinking water service. There uh, would be a meter installed at the property line to measure the use, and there is a uh, volumetric charge uh, based on the use. So the more you use, the more you would pay. Uh, the reclaimed water is slightly less in cost per thousand gallons in the drinking water, uh, and that is uh, one of the appeals uh, to it. And we have uh, additional feedback to save trees in the drought, uh, not grass. And then we had another question about the I-35 plan. And just in case, let's see, I want to make sure I didn't miss reading one of these questions. Oh, I did. Okay, how is the good water separated for houses? All my neighbors and I have organic gardens, so this reclaimed water would not be suitable for those. So who would like to talk about how the different water systems are separated? Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, 
So essentially, you, you may have heard the term purple pipe used. There's marking and identification requirements with um, reclaimed water and, and even some of the alternate other alternate waters that are out there. So the pipeline that we're going to be building is uh, in, entirely purple in color or wrapped in, in purple in color. Um, anyone who uh, has a uh, irrigation system on their property, if it's new, it would have to go in in purple color. But if it's uh, not, uh, then everything above ground would have to be marked and identified as purple. So the sprinkler heads, the meter boxes, the, the valve box lids and whatnot. Uh, and actually reclaimed water is, uh, uh, would be good for organic uh, gardening. It's uh, got um, nutrients in it, uh, particularly nitrogen and phosphorus, which is uh, particularly good for uh, growing uh, plants. And, and we've actually been approached uh, a number of times, and I think there are a couple of um, municipal or public gardens in the Mueller development that are using reclaimed water for uh, growing vegetables. The concern is you wouldn't want to spray it on a vegetable that's going to be eaten raw, like say a tomato, but if there were some drip irrigation for the tomato, that would be perfectly acceptable. Okay, and then uh, is there a limit on reclaimed water use for watering during the summer? So I think that question would relate to uh, watering restrictions. Do the same restrictions apply when it's reclaimed water? Uh, yeah, so the state, same watering restrictions do not apply uh, to reclaimed water as they do for drinking water. That is actually one of the benefits of using reclaimed water. But uh, having said that, um, we find that our customers are very responsible. Uh, they don't water in the middle of the day when it's a lot of the water is just lost to evaporation. And even some of our larger customers uh, like say the airport, which is on reclaimed water, they still adhere to the once a week watering day, even though they technically don't have to. So we find our customers are pretty responsible that way, um, but there is no limit on time of day or day of week for uh, irrigation with reclaimed water. 